Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by an American poet named Howard Nemirov. I've read a couple of poems by him here on the podcast. He was twice Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress, and he won the National Book Award, the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, and the Bollingen Prize for the Collected Poems of Howard Nemirov, which came out in 1977. The poem that I'm going to read today is called The Dying Garden. It goes like this. The flowers get a darkening brilliance now, and in the still sun-heated air stand out as stars and soloists where they had been before, choruses and choirs. At the equinox, I mean, when the great gyroscope begins to spin the sun under the line and do harvest together with fall. The time that trees crimp in their steepled shapes, the hand of leaf become a claw. When wealth and death are one. When moth and wasp and mouse come in the house for comfort if they can. The deepening time, when sketchy Orion begins his slow cartwheel about the southern sky. The time of turn, when moth and wasp and mouse come in the house to die there as they may. And there will be, you know, all saints, all souls, and Halloween, the killing frost, the end of daylight time, sudden the nightfall on the afternoon, and on children scuffling home through drifts of leaf, Till you drop the pumpkins on the compost heap, the blackened jack-o'-lanterns with their candled eyes, and in the darkening garden turn for home, through summer's flowers now all gone, withdrawn, the four o'clocks, the flocks, the hollyhocks, somber November, in amber and umber, embering out. So this poem references Halloween, it references November, but I wanted to read it now because for me, it's a poem about the, the coming of autumn. It's a poem about what we're going to be looking towards. And there's this line in there that is striking to me. The line is, when wealth and death are one. It's not the whole line. It's, there's an it's ishura and end stop and the semicolon in the middle of of the line, but the lad, the latter part of the line goes when wealth and death are one. That's a striking line because, well, for obvious reasons, the paradox in it. But um, you know, there's the sense that that harvest is both about death, about something ending, and about you know um, flourishing. You know, the the death of the plant or the or whatever it is you're harvesting, um, or at least the the impending death if you don't pluck it off the tree um, or, or the pull it out of the ground or whatever is also the thing that enables flourishing in times when without those things you would die. Particularly back when it was, you know, food storage was, was such an important thing to, to endure through the winter when the grocery stores weren't, you know, wasn't as easy to get everything you wanted in the grocery stores. Think of Little House in the Prairie in the book, The Long Winter, right? The Almanzo has to go hunting for food across the across a blizzard across the prairie and the only reason he's able to do that is because they've the, the proper amount of food has been stored by somebody and so that first line there i think speaks to this the flowers get a darkening brilliance now darkening brilliance is a, is, is a lovely profound uh complicated oxymoron of a, of, a, of a phrase, right? The flowers get a darkening brilliance now. And the reason I wanted to read this poem now is because that seems to be what's happening now in September as October is coming close. The rose bushes at our house, the sunflowers, they're all, um, the sunflowers have drooped over. The roses are starting to, to die and fall off the ground. I was just mowing my lawn this evening, actually. And the rose, there were so many pink rose petals all over the lawn and all the flower beds. But even as they do that, the, there's a brilliance to the way they darken, to the way they change color. Um, they're, they're beautiful even as they're dying. And, and I'm, I was just fascinated by that. And so that reminded me of this poem and then, then these couple of lines. Um, and so they, you know, you could have read it in October or November, given the context, the, the subject matter of the, the second half of the poem. But it's one of these, those poems that, you know, the flowers get a darkening brilliance now as I'm looking, looking ahead to. All Saints, All Souls, and Halloween, 
and somber November. Um, so wanted to read it now and I'll read it one more time for you here on the podcast. This is The Dying Garden by Howard Nemiroff. The flowers get a darkening brilliance now. And in the still sun-heated air stand out as stars and soloists where they had been before, choruses and choir. At the equinox, I mean when the great gyroscope begins to spin the sun under the line and do harvest together with fall. The time that trees crimp in their steepled shapes, the hand of leaf become a claw. When wealth and death are one, when moth and wasp and mouse come in the house for comfort if they can. The deepening time, when sketchy Orion begins his slow cartwheel about the southern sky. The time of turn, when moth and wasp and mouse come in the house to die there as they may. And there will be, you know, all saints, all souls, and Halloween, the killing frost, the end of daylight time. Sudden the nightfall on the afternoon and on children scuffling home through drifts of leaf. Till you drop the pumpkins on the compost heap, the blackened jack-o'-lanterns with their candled eyes, and in the darkening garden turn for home through summer's flowers now all gone, withdrawn, the floor clocks, the flocks, the hollyhocks, somber November and amber and umber, embering out. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem. <laughs>